Alright, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the TD Ameritrade API and how we can use it to stream real-time data. Um, first I'm just going to go over the future of TD Ameritrade's API and this is in response to what happened with Schwab and how their infrastructure is being moved over. And then I'm going to show the program in the IDE. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the future of the API. Um, if you don't already know what happened recently, I mean, if you have a TD account, you would have gotten an email. If you don't know, Schwab uh, bought them a couple years ago, and now they've just sent out an email recently explaining how they're going to be moving some infrastructure over to Schwab's. Um, and they'll probably be keeping, like, Thinkorswim. However, the API, people did use it, but it wasn't a considerable amount of their customer base, so they might be removing it. and. That's caused me to think, you know, I don't want to be working on a API that's going to die soon. Uh, they might they might still support it, of course. Um, but I've been thinking about looking into interactive brokers because they seem to have a pretty well-built API. Um, so now I'm going to get into showing it in the IDE. Um, if you've watched the first one, I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that you watched the first video. Um, that shows you how to set up like the globals.py file um, and do a couple other things. Um, this one's just going to be focusing on streaming. So um, I made a couple changes. Uh, I believe I renamed uh, the APIs folder. Uh, I forget what I had it as originally. Um, but now when you go to initialize it to get like to check your user tokens, you just call api.initialize. Um, and then a couple other things. So I now have a thread that runs constantly in the background that checks tokens and updates them every 30 minutes. So actually we can check that. In API here, you see we have a is it, check tokens daemon. Um, this right here just checks them every minute uh, and checks them and updates them if they are outdated. So here's check, to token, to check tokens manual. Um, this also means that if it's over 90 days old, um, then you will have to do this activation. Um, and that's like the long activation. So you kind of have to just remember to do that every 90 days, though, if this program doesn't already crash within that period, right? Um, you'll have to do that. Um, and then that, if, that append, appends it to a thread list. That's what all these do. Um, well, at least these last three right here. So what these do is these add them all to a thread list, and then these will run all the threads from right there. Um, so if we're doing streaming, right here we have stream that start automatic, and there's also right here there's also stream dot start manual, and I'll show the difference with, between these in a minute, um, so that you know what they both do, um, because one of them the automatic will run it every day from, let's see, what is it, like 9 to 8, I think. Um, that includes uh, after hours data. Um, and then the last thing right here is we're adding the main right up here to the thread list, and then we're going to run all of them. Um, and you do, right here, you have to run time.sleep if you're sending something directly after. Um, the start automatic thread or else it'll run at exactly the same time and obviously we don't want that. Um, so let's get into start automatic. So in stream I have two functions that you call to start it. I have start manual and start automatic and what start manual does is it first sets up the stream um, and that just fills the streamer subscription key connection info and user principles, and those are all needed for streaming, uh, specifically login. Um, and then I also have, and then it also, it oh, it opens the uh, output window of the stream. And this is put into a global variable, so you can access this terminal from anywhere. Um, then opens it, and then right here we have just client start, and this puts in a thread and then it runs it. Now start automatic is a bit more complex. Um, this one uses two threads, so we have a starting thread and a stopping thread. Um, so starting thread just starts it within these hours every day of the week, and then this one stops it um, during these hours or when it's the weekend. Um, and then 
if that matches and the stream is not active, then it will send the logout uh, request and then that uh, sets the variable that the stream is active to false. These will just start and stop it during the week so you don't have to look at it and you don't have to worry about it. What manual does is it, it keeps it running 24 seven. And the issue that I had with Stern Manual was after I ran it for about two days, it would end up crashing. Um, and I think it could just be that TD, you know, one just disconnects you after a certain amount of time. Maybe it's like 48 hours. It was roughly two days. I, I never uh, timed it, um, but it would, it, would, it would crash. So I made it automatic so you don't have to worry about it. This works mostly. Um, you might still get some weird errors with it. I've, I've had it running for about a week with no errors, but if, if you get errors, you'll probably have to solve them yourselves because um, getting this to work was like, it was really weird. I'm not really used to PyCron. Um, and then when it runs, you'll notice it's calling, where is it? Uh, underscore client start. Anything with an underscore in here, as you'll see like right here and right here, that's called, that should only be called within this file. Um, so they should only be called locally and they, can, they shouldn't be called from over here in like main. Um, so in client start, um, you can see we assemble the URL. Um, and this is a little bit busy. I don't really like all the, the documentation. I figured, you know, to actually properly understand the code, you can just read it. Um, so we're taking a start timestamp. This is just to check right down here. If if it's not active for more than a minute, then it will it then it will probably end up in a you know an infinite loop. So this just permanently exits it. it. Just says there's a problem elsewhere. Probably something you didn't fill out in the globals.py file. Uh, first we send the admin.login request, um, and then right here this is some cool code that I added. And what this does is it adds all of what you already sent to the stream, if that makes sense. You can also use this so if the stream is not active and you send something, so over here in main, if the stream's not active, it will still try to send these, but what will happen is, of course, the stream isn't running. Uh, what this does instead is it adds it, it adds it to a list so that when you start up the stream next, it, of course, it will call client start. It'll come down here and it'll check through all the subscriptions that you have and for each one of these, if there's something in there, it'll send that request in the same order that you sent it. Um, and that is, this also works for removing. So if you say um, stream, actually I forget what you call to remove it. Uh, it's like an un unsubscribe request. If you, if you do an unsubscribe, it'll remove it from the list. So this is useful when you're restarting and stopping the stream, it'll save it in there. It's not an offline save, it's a memory save. So when you close out the program, the whole list gets, it gets removed. Um, now I have, um, after it sends all these, it will uh, wait for the received, so you, it'll tell you, you know, subscription successful or unsuccessful for each one of them. And then right here is the main body of the server. Um, now I have a, this just, essentially what this does is it goes in a loop and it waits for a, a um, for something that's received in a, in a loop. It awaits it, awaits it, awaits it, awaits it. And this is so it can be concurrent. So this way you can both be receiving and sending stuff at the exact same time. Now, I, I did this just so uh, you didn't have to have like a checker variable in here that would check, okay, well, do I need to send anything? And then it would send it. I just thought that was kind of clunky. And this way, I forget what it's called. It's like buy something. You can send and receive at the same time. Um, and that, that, by the way, sending is in a separate thread. That's why over here we use main as the sending thread. Um, and then right here we have two exception classes, or causes, or well, whatever. Exception things. Um, so right here, if it's, it's closed OK, then it will just print that it's closed OK, and it will set make sure that it's set that it's active to false, and then it will stop stream. And then here we have an error. Uh, this just checks, I mean, if they're, if they did, anything other than closed OK. So it's a catch-all. Uh, it just checks, well, if, if it's less than a minute, it will result in an infant loop. Else, it probably just crashed, so it will go up here. Since this whole thing's in a loop, it'll go back to the while through, and it will start the stream again. Um, and that will stay in the open window. Um, now, so 
that's how the server runs. Uh, like to summarize how the server server runs, it's just an infinite loop, basically checking uh, if if anything's been received, and that's after it's logged in and everything. Now in main, you'll see we have stream .send. Um, and what these do is over here. So uh, it's going to be down here. We have send and then the list of requests. So you can actually list what you're trying to send. Um, you could actually put these in a list and it will do each one of these. Um, and then uh, it right here, it assembles them into the format that they wanted in. So we could send multiple requests. And I also have to, you have to do it this way. I have a utilities.string to list. What this does is it assembles them like this. So what we're gonna get is like a request one and comma, uh, like request two. And there's no space in between. It's just muscle memory. So it formats them in a way that's like this as strings. It's, it's really weird um, and I couldn't, I think I was having problems with the other way of sending it, um, and then it runs the async IO, or async IO um, underscore send. And this is just right here. So WS is the global WebSocket, uh, and then it will await the WebSocket send. Um, and then if it's not active, then it won't send anything. Um, but you'll notice over here in main, while we may be sending some, well, it seems like we're sending something right here, the actual check case that adds it into the list of sent things is in level one that quote. Um, so up here, right here, this is what I was talking about. So this is this is the list of everything that we sent. So we'll resend it if you know if the stream crashes, it'll resend everything that we have. Um, so let's go over. We can check that uh, in level one. So. It's kind of the same um, as APIs. If you want to send something, you'll just do stream.send, and then you can go down here, you can choose which one you want, um, and you can choose like the sub the subclass of what you want to send. So in level one, let's add this over here. Um, we have quote, so we'll send in the keys. Actually, this would be, oh no, that's it. So you have keys and fields, and then pretty much all these files are the same except for the utilities file. Uh, all the files just pertain, contain a return of the utilities.subs. So if we'll go into utilities now, up here we have a subs. So this is what we have, and this is this is the structure for all subs, unsubbed, and, and basically all the command formats for the uh, for the WebSocket streaming is basically all the same. Um, so you can break it down into one function, like subs or unsubs, that does everything that you want it to, and you, it makes all the code a lot smaller. So first we check if it's active, um, and then logging. I, oh yeah, the logging is exactly what we're doing by recording what everything, everything that we send. Um, so we basically check for every key in there. It's like we'd say, oh, for AMD, um, and then in here we'd set the service, which is um, quote and key AMD, and we set it equal to the fields that we want. So we do like AMD equal to these fields, and we do that for each key. So for Intel, we do the same thing. Um, and then it would just return a basic request, which is right down here. And this just assembles it into the basic request. And you can see, you can see this in their uh, documentation. They have something that. Uh, basically shows you how to build a basic request and like I was saying earlier this is used universally for pretty much all commands right here actually I believe I think no those aren't all the commands um, but there's like add unsubs there's a couple others uh, oh and login that's another one um, so if the stream is not active uh, it'll still add it to the log I guess I could have just added that above all of this but um, and it also prints this and it just says that the request has been saved and it will be sent on the stream start. Uh, so I'm going to insert a video of me on my remote server just running this and showing how uh, the stream works and how it functions since now I'm past market hours or at least active market hours, it'd be after hours. 
All right, so here we are in the server computer that I have. I'm just remote in. I'm going to show the running of the uh, the streaming side. So here it is uh, on here. So you can see you sent the login request. We get a timestamp with that. Um, and then we did the two subscribe. So we did Meta and then AMD and Intel. And the level one quotes are going to override what you previously sent. So every time that you send this, unless you're doing um, and add, which I have yet to implement, it'll go based off of what you last sent. So this would be AMD and Intel. You can see right here, AMD and Intel. Um, you also have to make sure that you're always sending zero. Uh, this is important because, uh, well, if you don't, if you don't send that, then you'll just get a bunch of like random arbitrary numbers back. Um, but you can see, so I believe eight's volume two is a. Two and one, I, I think they're, they're both some form of quote. I kind of forget the uh, differences on them. But it's, it says so in the, what they are in the documentation. Um, and then I also have it just, um, I have a loop so I can send anything that I want to. So like if I wanted to send a, if I wanted to get meta now, I can just do this. Um, and this is basically how it would run. Uh, like normally, so you can see right here, that's what happens when I send a, another. Uh, quote request. So you can see right here we have meta now and that takes over our AMD and Intel uh, streaming. Okay, so yeah, I hope that demo showed how to uh, like run it and the reason I can't show it on here is because well a it is running on that server and um, and because you can only have one stream running at a time. Like you can't open up multiple windows and have them streaming at the same time. It'll cook the other person out, or maybe both of them. I, I've done it once, I forget what it does exactly though. Um, I don't think I have much else to show about it, um, other than I'll probably be working on databasing uh, stock tickers next. I just want to come up with a a very solid like structure of, or I guess universal structure of how uh, data can be stored in a database, and I, I was, I'm Debating on whether to use Postgres SQL or um, SQL Lite, um, just because Postgres would have some delay uh, if you have it on a different server. Though of course the server that I have my well server installed on my uh, SQL server installed on uh, it would be a local instance, so I don't think it would be super laggy. It's just it kind of limits the amount of people that can use the database capability if I was to use that sort of database. Like an SQLite database might be uh, better to do. Um, but you can, of course, you can always adapt it. You can always code it yourself. This is what I have in databases right now. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not super great at uh, SQL. <laughs> uh, so you can see this. Anybody who's very experienced is probably looking at this and saying that's terrible. Also, these don't work. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't do this type of uh, concatenation for a string uh, when you're ex ex executing SQL. Um, so I still need to work on like formatting strings. I just want to make it fast um, and reliable. But yeah, so that's basically the whole streaming addition to my API. Um, I was hoping to get it out sooner, but uh, I had a, some exams, so I really couldn't focus on it that much. And um, yeah, so. Uh, interactive brokers, I might just switch over to them uh, because it's just very uncertain what the future of TD is. Um, and of course, I'd, I, like I said, I, I don't want to be working on it if it's not even going to work in a couple months. Uh, I think it's about three months that they would offer it. Um, but we'll see. Um, and it'll also be implemented with Schwab, so completely different. I don't know. But we'll see. Thanks for watching.